Okay, so <clears throat> let's get started. So welcome back, and we have a very special session now on public outreach in science. So this was actually Arvind Paranspe's idea, and what we've tried to do is to have a few speakers uh, to give you a flavor for public outreach and Ayuka's connection to it, and the you know putting it in the context of what are the challenges in in the Indian setting, particularly for public outreach. So we have a list. I mean, we have. Uh, speakers, so JVN is the first, uh, followed by Arvind, and then we have a very special guest, uh, Ms. Sump Sumati Sampemane from Mumbai, uh, followed by one representative, Sonal Thorve from Ayuka Saipop. Okay, so I won't presume to introduce JVN to an audience in Ayuka. <laughs> I will get kicked out even sooner than <laughs> expected. But I want to say something. So I remember being uh, about 10 or 11 years old, and this is in the early 90s. And I remember watching Doordarshan and seeing JVN being in, interviewed by, by somebody. And I remember my mother telling me who Jayant Narlikar is and why he is so important for science in India. And I've always associated him growing up as somebody who took on the battle against astrology. Yeah. So he, I think the interview was, in his characteristic way, explaining why astrology is not a science. Right. So uh, I'm very happy that he has agreed to share some of his experiences with us and give us his own perspective on public outreach in India. Friends, first of all, I would like to compliment the committee which organized this whole program uh, for including public outreach of science as part of topics for discussion, because it is very often neglected, uh, because everybody says it is somebody else's job to do science. Uh, I do science, and he does the science uh, outreach. So I, I would like to make the point in the beginning uh, why, why it is very important public outreach of science. And I want to quote one <coughs> couplet by Kabir, uh, who wrote in Hindi. Uh, and then I will translate it for those who don't know Hindi. Uh, Guru Govind dono khade, kake lagu pai, balihari guru apane govind dio batai. This <coughs> Kabir is aware that in front of him, uh, the God himself and his guru, his teacher, they are both standing. He suddenly realizes that they are both come. So his, he is asking that, that these two people are standing in front of me. Whom should I salute first? Who is important? And then he answers that uh, I would like to salute the teacher first because through his teaching, I came to know about God. So this is the importance of teacher. Now you ch change this God into science and teacher into public outreach personality. So uh, that personality is, is important who tells me as a common man, what is the importance of God? Not God, science. <laughs> So uh, why do we need people to be informed about science? There, so there are many answers to this question. First of all, we realize that we live in a world of science in the sense that science is dominating our life, whether we like it or not. And so we should learn to know more about science and what its implications are. Not everything that science gives is good or benign. There may be something which, has, which will come with side effects which are not very good. So we should know what science as a force is. So that is why one, uh, one reason why we need to inform ourselves, and that is where general public outreach comes in. The second point is, uh, it's more kind of uh, looking at 
our own profession as scientists. Uh, we need uh, more and more bright students to come to science. And they won't come unless they know what science is and they are attracted to science. Simply, if you leave them on the way they are presented in their schools uh, with science, then it is very unlikely that they will be attracted because I don't know outside India what the situation is, but the way science is presented in Indian schools in general, they are given certain portions to understand, but comprehension takes back seat and you, are, uh, you tend to encourage them to learn it by heart. So this, this was the uh, way one teaches. For, uh, I, example, I remember in my daughter's first standard text, she, she was asked to write, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. She write several times these lines. So I asked her, what, have they told you what this line means? And so she didn't, she wasn't told, but she was told to re reproduce it just as it is, don't change anything. And that has to be uh, memorized by heart. So that was right in the first standard. Uh, if she had been encouraged to ask the question, the sun rises in the east, sets in the west, how does it come again? in the East next day. At least uh, that kind of question, she should have been encouraged to ask, but the school teaching did not allow that. So one needs to improve the image of science in the common school students' uh, eyes. And <clears throat> another very important point, uh, especially in Indian, uh, context is that we have inherited a large number of superstitions which have been passed on for generations. And the longer they are in force, the stronger they are in public mind that these things have, we have been believing for such a long time, so they must be good, they must be right. So don't question, you just follow them. So this is another aspect one needs to correct. And finally, one could say that uh, the question, habit to question whatever is happening, why this is so, why should I do this, why should he do that? This why should, should be more brought into public mind. Otherwise, they will just follow routinely whatever they have been told. So in <coughs> In this connection, uh, I want to tell you about one experience I had. This was in connection with uh, astrology. And astrology, you will find in, in this country, uh, it is believed by uh, probably as many people as the rest of the world, I don't know. In the rest of the world, they may be going by these columns which come in the newspaper, but they are taken more as a fun rather than anybody actually follows the, uh, uh, the uh, forecast given there. Uh, in India, you can have cabinets being sworn in at a certain time which the astrologer has been consulted and gives that this is when you should do it, otherwise, your uh, government may not last very long. So when this threat is given by the astrologer, then they want to do it. Uh, and the argument is, uh, if it costs some money, we'll pay it, but let uh, Jupiter or Mars, whatever, let him be happy. And we will uh, continue with our superstition. So in, in this way, uh, <coughs> Uh, after many such arguments with them, uh, we decided, by, I will uh, shortly tell you who these we are, we decided to conduct a test 
uh, and this see whether astrologers pass that particular test. So we meant, uh, apart from myself, uh, the statistics department in Pune University, the university here, and there was an organization which uh, is supposedly for eradication of superstitions. So they had a large number of uh, force of uh, young men who are helping the purpose of cause of the organization. So those were uh, involved. What we did was the following. This, this was a uh, numerical experiment because speaking in qualitative terms, uh, often people uh, make misuse of something which is really not very frequent, but you make out that they are, that's very frequent and so on. So let us keep to numbers. So what we did was to collect birth charts of 100 very bright students in school and birth charts of 100 mentally retarded uh, students in the school. So you have 100 of these, 100 of these. Then we mix them, shuffle them together, mix them completely, and <clears throat> took out at random from that uh, uh, groups of 40 birth charts. So if I take 40 birth charts, some of them will be uh, of mentally retarded and some will be of uh, 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 clever uh, students. Then we invited astrologers to take part in the test in the following way. We will send them one batch of 40 birth charts and looking at those birth charts and doing their examination of birth charts, they have to tell which birth chart belongs to mentally retarded and which birth chart belongs to uh, the uh, clever boy. So this was, uh, invite, the invitation was went and uh, we had pu publicized it a lot, newspapers. We had uh, earlier the astrologers, when they learned that I, we wanted to conduct a test, uh, they didn't like to be subjected to any test. So, but we told them that this is what you will have to do. And if you claim that you can, from birth chart, tell the character of the person and tell whether he's intelligent or not, then you should be able to do this very easily. So we uh, got some 50 odd uh, numbers of uh, applications from astrologers to whom we sent each one a uh, batch of these 40. Now, <clears throat> the question arises that if they send you a group 40 may be equal to plus 15 plus 25, or 15 plus 25, let us say, 15 good and 25, 15 uh, clever and 25 retarded, whatever the group turns out, they were to tell uh, that uh, result that so many have been sent. And knowing the answer ourselves, we could compare whether they were right or wrong. So we told them that um, what will constitute a significant result from them. So when they send the 40 results back, do we uh, expect all of them to be 40 out of 40 to be right? Uh, we, we didn't insist that all 40 out of 40 should be right. But if they were randomly chosen, uh, how many do you expect to get right? So uh, we to told them that up to, uh, they, of course they wouldn't understand the statistic, but we explained to them why, by the example of tossing a coin, what happens and uh, uh, if, if out of 40 tosses of the coin, you got for 20 right, 20 wrong, uh, that is pure chance. You, you, getting 20 right uh, is not a big deal. So 
So for 20 out of 40 is not a big deal, then what, how, what is a big deal? So we told them 28 out of 40 must be right. And otherwise, uh, if you, are, you get less of them right, then uh, it is within statistical pr probability. And it won't, won't be significant. So out of those 50, something like uh, 40 replied. I would actually send them back. And <clears throat> then we can, uh, compared. And we found that the average right answers number was 17 out of 40. This was the average. And the best performer, astrologer, uh, had scored 20, 22 out of 40, which was all below the uh, line we had drawn. And we had drawn this line in advance because we didn't want them to compare af afterwards, saying that you, you have put the line too high <laughs> looking at our answers. So uh, we told them that this is what, what is happening and none of you are passing. So, and even if you had done by uh, tossing a coin, you would have got an, on an average 20 out of 40, instead of which you got 17 after all those <laughs> consultations. So, so in the end, what happened was that uh, uh, they started the astrologer lobby, which had not taken part, but uh, who were watching from the side. And, and some had taken part, these were this professional. And, and we had also, to, to cover ourselves, we had also taken uh, the, we had contacted one organization of professional astrologers. So I, I imagine like something like Astrological Society of India, or what, <laughs> <laughs> with due respect to the Jaipur people, <laughs> okay. So uh, if, you, uh, if you take those um, uh, <coughs> results uh, out of uh, uh, hundred, uh, what we did was we gave all the 200 cards to that society. And they said, you get any number of people to, uh, of your organization to help you. And you sent us back all the 200 results, but telling which are right, which are wrong. So they did that, and we found that 102 out of 200 were uh, right. And now that also we told them, you, you, they were expected to score somewhere around 118, 119, but they got only 102 right. So from on all counts, we showed that they were not uh, having any significant uh, ability uh, on the basis of astrology to re de settle this question. Of course, the, the, there was a hue and cry and uh, many astrologers complained that those who took part were not real astrologers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so we had not got any uh, real astrologers to test. But before that, we had checked all their credentials and they had been professionally practicing astrology for at least 20 years. So they, they were not novices in their profession. And this, this particular argument would not buy. And, and this society the, as a whole had failed. So that also they could not complain against. So this was the situation, and uh, I wrote an article on this. In case any of you are interested, I can send you a copy. Uh, it is published in a magazine called Skeptical Inquirer, which comes from US. So they, they have published a, a version of this, which I had written. So <coughs> in, in all, I find that this is the toughest battle to face uh, in public outreach program. You can certainly encourage young kids to become 
more interested in science, uh, you can, to some extent, increase awareness of science among the senior people, their parents, uh, and even grandparents. But to make them feel, make them believe that uh, astrology is, is not having any real status in, in, in the world of science, this is going to be very difficult. Whatever you do, they will want to believe in what they have been uh, told to believe. So I, I think I will stop here. Uh, you had asked me to highlight what is the most difficult part, so that is the most difficult part. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, I'm sure. Two comments. One is that Kepler made most of his money through astrology, <laughs> <laughs> and that kept him alive. Um, yeah. The other was the uh, delightful uh, advertisement that appeared in one of the English papers, which was an advertisement from Queen Mary College London, which mentioned 15 members of the astrological department of the <laughs> Queen Mary College, uh, and listed all these members <laughs> and asked for new members of the department to apply. <laughs> I, I should mention that the year Ayuka was set up, we gave the telephone directory uh, our phone number and address to list. And what came out, uh, and Govind Swaroop was delighted to show, show it to us, because there is a friendly rivalry between <laughs> them and us. He said, it said astrological, uh, uh, India, so, uh, Ayuka, so instead of ast astronomy and astrophysics, it said astrology and astrophysics. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I think you said that there were 40 astrologers and the minimum they got right was 17 and the maximum was 22, but that seems, uh, anomalously close, too close to 20, because the uh, square root of 20 is a four, four and a half, <laughs> and one sigma is about four and a half, so they are all within about the no, 60th percentile. Average is 17, and maximum is 20. Oh, I thought the, uh, the no. minimum average was 17. Was 17. Oh, I see, okay. okay. <laughs> we, all right. We, we had My somewhere mistake. the two, <laughs> all the uh, numbers. <laughs> well, I'll just add, I received this uh, uh, Shomak, has posted on Facebook that even the ASI there, on the text it is written Astrology uh, uh, Institute, that is, uh, sorry, a, um, Astrological Society of India. So that is there on their desk. And Shomak had received one letter, which is addressed to Shomak Rai Chaudhary, uh, Institute of Astrology. And we, I have a copy of that letter. <laughs> it was posted, uh, the address was posted like that. It's a fascinating uh, discussion, but I wonder, there are no science skeptics in the room. We're all preaching to the converted. <laughs> <laughs> so the problem I think we face when scientists, uh, scientists, the image at least, that it's an exact discipline and there is an answer to a question on whether the sun will appear again tomorrow and so on, or what the weather will be tomorrow. So I think it seems more and more that now, and sometimes it acts, if you like, we pay the price for it because they said, oh, you said that, but actually you don't quite know the answer. Uh, so the, this is the question, how do we communicate uncertainty <laughs> to the public and to politicians? Because it comes with a package. You know, when we give a result, we put plus minus to sigma. We should also learn how to communicate that. I wonder if you have any thoughts on that. No, I, I don't have a direct answer to it, but what we had done actually was to advertise this to free, so anybody who read could send a re request for a sample and when he sent he would he was required to send his biodata or whatever cv including the ex uh, experience as astrologer what he had been doing so that that was done Uh -huh, General, when we communicate, explain to the 
to the public uh, that you know we don't quite know what dark matter is, we don't quite know what dark energy is, but the questions are there, or when we quote a number for the Hubble constant that it's not the final answer, how do we explain that our methodology is well defined? It's just that the answer itself comes with uncertainty. Yeah. Maybe we can talk later, but yeah. I'm, I'm not able to sure. make out. Yeah. I guess one way is to just tell them what, how the scientific method works yeah. before that. But I want to mention maybe one example to aware people if uh, we do not uh, try to popularize science is that your president become Trump. And uh, that would be a nightmare for everyone. I guess that, that, that would be one example. Uh, and I also wanted to mention, it's not, the, not only the issue that people confuse astronomy with astrology. When I went to US, when I said, you know, I'm cosmology, most of the people told me, oh, you are cosmetologist. So that's another problem we have. Uh, <laughs> so it's not just astrology. And, you know, until 2003, there was a society in the United States, I'm sure Devian can con confirm that, it was the Flat Earth Society. And they are starting again. The guy died, uh, the society died, but uh, recently they are trying to, again, uh, establish the institution. Society. I think one problem we often face, suppose it may be educated bank employee or anybody, two kind of questions. One is science. You have so many things for which you do not have answer. Rather than thinking that science means it is something progress. Some of them you find answer, some you further do the work instead. You do not have answer is one kind of thing. Other familiar example is even you look at your weather forecast, how accurate it is. This is the other kind of thing that is practically relevant. So in a sense, I suppose uh, the way our outreach, we may have to be aware of some of this because they do not know much about statistical significance or whatever mentioned. Other thing is, okay, science in terms of their daily life, how useful or accurate it has been. Whereas technology, they can see whether the mobile or TV or any of them. Whereas some of these things where we say we use science mm -hmm. in terms of their daily life, has it been? That is the way they might be able to see. So, if astrology prediction is wrong or if a weather forecast is wrong, which is more serious for them? I think we will have to at some stage address that one. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry, I have no comment on that. Actually, this is a lighter comment. I hope you didn't publish this result and say who was the astrologer who got 21. Because they would have used it in their advertisement to say that no, you, <laughs> you the best in the right. country. <laughs> Even the, the astrologer who, who scored in less than 20, 17 or 18 or something. Even he asked for a certificate saying. <laughs> <laughs> so so we, had, we had to refrain from any such <laughs> endorsement, as you call it. Uh, this is a qu uh, question about or your thoughts on how scientists have of late tried to sell science to society and the word God particle was, has become very popular. Yeah. And I find it always a little embarrassing when somebody very sincerely starts asking me what that is. Yeah. So would you have some caution about that? No, I, I th whenever such an example is presented, I try to d deplore, <laughs> deplore it, saying that it should not have been done. But that, that is all you can do. <laughs> so, Jayant, I have a question. Yes. Do you remember any success story in the battle against astrology? Oh, ag against a astrology? Well, uh, uh, there is a uh, colleague of mine on this, uh, uh, this group who participated in the test. Uh, he was earlier a professional astrologer who realized that it was all uh, hoax or whatever you call it. 
and then he joined us to help us to classify these uh, various birth charts. So he has written a book called Before You Consult an Astrologer. That is the name of the title of the book. And it gives you uh, reasons why you w may want to see an astrologer. And then the answer is given why it is not relevant or useful to do it. So it's, it's a well-written book based on his personal experience. And uh, I, I think that has helped, uh, not, I would not use the word convert, but at least many people change their mind about astrology. But it's a long way to go. It is. <laughs> yes. So I think we should stop here. Let's thank Jayant for a fascinating <laughs> set of insights. So next, we have Arvind Paranspe, who has been associated with Ayuka for many years. He's currently director of Nehru Planetarium, Bombay. <laughs>